Hey everyone and welcome to Battletech. So, if you don't know, Battletech is a turn-based tactical game from Hairbrained Schemes and published by Paradox. It's based on the old Battletech tabletop and it's actually made by the same people who made the original Battletech tabletop. So, it should be quite interesting. It's basically an XCOM style game, but it has completely different mechanics. And I will be talking about a lot of the mechanics in this video, but there is a lot to talk about. I will try to cover everything, but there's a chance I might miss something here or there and then cover it in the subsequent videos. In any case, if you're wondering whether you need any Battletech tabletop experience to enjoy this game, you really don't. Up until recently, I knew pretty much nothing about Battletech tabletop, but I learned most if not all of the basic game mechanics. And it didn't take that long. So anyway, let's get started then, shall we? We will be starting a new campaign and I'm quite looking forward to this. I already played quite a bit and the campaign is very sandboxy, so you can actually play it for a pretty long time. I am Kamea of House Arano, High Lady of the Oregon Reach, Protector of Koromadir, and the Sword of Restoration. But I am not a hero, no matter what the stories say. A hero would have sacrificed more, compromised less. A hero would have done better. You know this, of course. You were there. My father used to tell me stories about the ancient times, about the Star League, a golden age of prosperity, upheld by the great mech warriors of old, guardians of the innocent, protectors of the peace. I always dreamed of following in their footsteps. I was too young to see the truth of things. After all, it wasn't heroism or a noble cause that won me the throne. It was hiring a mercenary, skilled enough, perhaps ruthless enough, to carry the day. Hiring you. I still don't know if you fought for honor or for the thrill of it, for belief in my cause or just in my money. But whether it was your noble heart or mercenary mind, your actions gave us hope. That makes you a hero in the eyes of history. Whether you believe it, that's up to you. Alright, well, so that's the intro. It's a pretty interesting one, actually. <laughs> kind of tells the story backwards, in a sense. Welcome to the Oregon Reach. The Oregon Reach is a small kingdom in the remote periphery, a region of space that lies at the outskirts of more densely colonized inner sphere. It is home to the Oregon Coalition, a federation organized around a parliamentary monarchy and ruled by the Arano family. For three generations under the rule of House Arano, the Oregon Coalition has remained a relatively peaceful corner of the periphery. It is here your story begins. Okay then, decades ago your family came to the reach from, and we can pick. I don't think this actually makes a difference in terms of gameplay, or if it does it's minimal and I haven't actually noticed. So let's say we are going to pick the deep periphery. Alright, sure. You are of noble birth. Through immigrants to the Oregon Reach, your family soon established a comfortable presence in a small backwater system in the edge of Oregon space. By the time you were born, your family had become a de facto ruling nobility of the system's only inhabited planet. You were the oldest child, heir to the family's titles and ancestral battle mech, an old blackjack BJ-1. This is where you met Raju Mastiff Montgomery, a veteran of the succession wars, whom your parents hired on for a season to train you as mech warrior. Raju was a strict but capable teacher and he quickly became a skilled pilot under his tutelage. It was an uneventful life. Until the day after your 16th birthday when you were exiled, you struck out on your own, your family went bankrupt, 
your family died in an accident and your family was betrayed. So here we can see what bonuses we'll get based on these choices. So let's go for... I kind of like having gunnery. Gunnery and guts. Your family was betrayed. Your family was betrayed and its seat of power destroyed. You defeated the betrayers, but you were the sole surviving member of your house. With nothing but your family's ancestral blackjack left to call your own, you set off to make a new life for yourself. Sounds good to me. Out on your own, you fell into the life of a Oregon Coalition soldier, plus one gunnery, Frontier pirate, plus one guns, Solaris gladiator, plus one gunnery, Inner Sphere Mercenary, Tactics, Frontier Freelancer, Tactics, and the Merchant Guard, plus one piloting. Now, some of these choices can also affect dialogues in the game in pretty interesting ways. That's just something to keep in mind. So it's not just this bonus, it also affects dialogues, which you might or might not care about. Anyway, what are we going to pick? Let's pick Frontier Freelancer. We'll get plus one tactics that way. Alright, sounds good. Until years after, you crossed path with Raju Mastiff Montgomery once again, while running a routine patrol for a local government on the outskirts of the Oregon Reach. You were set upon by pirates and left for dead. Raju happened to be visiting the capital city and picked up your distress call. Upon rescuing you, he offered you a job in the House Arano Royal Guard. So it is that you find yourself reunited with your old mentor, preparing your ancestral blackjack for guard duty on the coronation day of Lady Kamea Arano. Alright, so now we get to pick a portrait and name our main character. I'm actually going to name our main character after my favorite XCOM character. And so he is going to be John Bradford. Call sign Central. Now we just need a portrait. Alright, well, let's pick this one, that's good enough. So, John Bradford, nickname Central. And here's our character. Decades ago, your family came to the Oregon Reach from the deep periphery. The day after your 16th birthday, your family was betrayed and murdered. Plus one gunnery, plus one guts. Out on your own, you fell into the life of a frontier freelancer, plus one tactics. So here are the skills. Free gunnery, two piloting, free tactics, free guts. And that's our main character. The High Lord Tamati Arano II is dead. The Oregon Reach is left at an uncertain crossroads. Once prosperous, it is now a kingdom in decline, surrounded by powerful neighbors. Lord Santiago Espinosa, brother-in-law to the late High Lord, is convinced that the slow-moving council of founding houses must be dissolved. His proposed directive would conscript their house guard and centralize power under a single throne. However, the High Lord's heir, the noble Lady Camera Arano, is determined to rebuild the reach without transforming it into an authoritarian state. She refuses to enact her uncle's directive and has rebuked his vehement pleas to, con to reconsider. On the morning of Lady Arano's ascension to the throne, her loyal captain of the guard, Raju Mastiff Montgomery, makes preparations to escort her safely to the coronation procession that awaits in Cordia City. Alright then. So this is basically a prologue mission. That's what it is. Just so you know. Coronation Day, Arano Summer Palace. So, let's begin, shall we? Command interface initiated. Here we are. Right, camera movement, obviously. There is a bit of a tutorial in the game, but I find that it's really not enough. It doesn't explain a lot of the mechanics, and it doesn't explain some of them nearly enough. So I will be talking about them myself. Okay, Central, I had the Espinosa refit yards rush the repairs on your blackjack. Looks like it's all in one piece, but we should run some diagnostics on it, just to be sure. Standard field tests, you know the drill. More importantly though, I wanna tell you more about the job I brought you here to do. Now do me a favor and get that battle mech moving. Let's see if there are any kinks in the actuators. Alright, so first we get to move. So when you move, you first pick 
the tile you want to move to, the exact location, and then you choose the direction you want to face. This arc indicates how you are able to fire your weapons after moving. So this is your firing arc basically, and the colors indicate the optimal range for your weapons. The lighter it is, the more optimal the range is. So the darker color means it's a sub-optimal range and you will take penalties. Anyway, we will move to the marked location. Now there is a lot to talk about, so I'll try to not talk about everything all at the same time. One thing at a time. Raju, I brought you here because there's something wrong in the capital. It's been too quiet since High Lord Tomati's funeral, and I'm worried about Lady Kamea's safety during her coronation procession. Anyway, looks like your actuators check out. Let's conduct a weapons test. Target one of those burnt out old urban mechs and open fire. Like I was saying, I so now we can right. attack one of them. And when we target them, off. now there's a lot to talk about things. here. So this is not really proper combat just yet, but let's cover at least some of the things that we can see here already. First of all, these are the weapons that we have. If we hover over them long enough, we'll see some of the details. There are several different classes of weapons in the game with different roles, some to speak, and with different ranges. We have the lasers, which do not require ammunition, but generate more heat. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We also have the autocannon, which has very long range, but requires ammunition. And ammunition is actually a physical object in your mech. And it can explode, do damage to you, but again, we'll talk about that later. And these are the two basic weapon classes that this particular mech has equipped. Now, the mechs don't have hit points in traditional sense, or at least if you're used to something like XCOM for example, you don't have like a global pool of health that you die when you lose it. You have different sections and each individual section has its own armor and its own structural points. And once you burn through the armor, you will start doing damage to the structure. Then you can also blow off that entire section. And there are several different ways to actually kill the mech. You can destroy both the legs, so right leg and left leg, that will basically kill the mech. You can also kill the pilot in several different ways. You can knock down the mech, which will injure the pilot. You can do damage to the head, which can also injure the pilot. If you injure the pilot enough, the pilot will die and you basically killed the mech. And the third way is to destroy the central section, the center torso. If you destroy the center torso, the mech will die. This also goes for vehicles, because mechs aren't the only units in the game, there are also vehicles. There are also stationary targets like turrets. So we can also see the rear armor, because if you attack from the rear, you will hit these lighter armored sections. Now, you can have more armor on the rear section, but in vast majority of cases, mechs usually have weaker armor on the rear. Just something to keep in mind. So then, the second most important mechanic to know about is heat. Each weapon generates heat, and we can see exactly how much if we hover over them. The medium laser generates plus 10 heat, the auto cannon generates plus 5 heat, and the heat indicator is right here. This red bar is basically how much heat will generate if we take this shot. We can disable certain weapons, and you can see that the heat level will drop. If you reach the white marker, your mech will overheat, and overheating is really bad, because it can injure your pilot, it will damage your actual mech, so it's best to avoid that, and you will not be able to fire your weapons properly if you're overheating. So you should generally avoid that. And heat also depends on the environment you're in. So for example, you will generate more heat in, let's say, desert environment compared to tundra environment. But these are the basics of heat. There's a little bit more to it than that. But let's actually take this shot, shall we? We can fire everything we got. We can disable certain weapons if we want to, but there's no need to do that right now. So attack. Now there's a lot more to combat than this, but we'll talk about all of these when we get into an actual fight. Because this was a target with no weapons. That's a pretty important part. 
Because you can neutralize actual weapons. Anyway, Raju. Good shot. Your guns are in working order at least. Alright then. So here's a vehicle. I've been training Lady Arano since she was 14 years old. She can be naive at times and proud, but I have no doubt that she'll be a just and effective ruler. It's on us to see her safely to Cordia City. I'll rest easier once she's in the capital with her cousin Victoria by her side. Lady Victoria, well, she's only been training under me for a single season, but she's already shaped herself into one of the strongest mech warriors I've ever seen. Reminds me a lot of you, truth be told. Anyway, we should run a check on your targeting computer. You see that drone over there? The one moving through the tree line? Put some hurt on it for me, and then when it turns, take it out with a rear angle shot. After it's down, we'll keep moving. Camille's like a daughter to me. Okay Her then, so our turn again. Was a good friend. First back to our mech. So now, normally when you move or when enemies move, there's evasion, but there's none here in this case, so we'll talk about that later. There is however cover, and cover reduces the damage the target takes. We can actually see the exact details over here. So we can see that it's moving through a forest, and forest reduces movement and spotting distance, and provides cover, which provides 25% damage reduction against ranged attacks to the front and to the side and does not stack with Guarded. Guarded is an ability which is generally better than a bonus from Forest. It doesn't stack, but Guarded ability provides 50% damage reduction. So that's just something to keep in mind. Then we can see the cover bonus, damage reduction, it's a training target, and it's weak against melee. Alright, well, let's take a shot then, shall we? We don't have to use everything. In fact, let's not waste ammunition, and we'll use the medium lasers. So we fired at the target in the forest. Now he's moving again. And it has cover again. Well, it still has cover because it's still inside the forest. So now we can fire at it from the back. Like I said earlier, most units have weaker armor in the back, but you can customize your mechs, and if you want to, you can't give them stronger armor from the rear, there's just not much point doing that most of the time. Nice shot. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with Oregon politics, but the reach was badly shaken by Lord Tamati's death. It needs a smooth transfer of power, and Kamea belongs on the Cormorant throne. Go ahead and fire up your jump jets, kid. I want to see you descend this cliff face. Aim for that patch of ground there near the edge of the lake. Alright, so now we can use the jump jet. So jumping tends to generate quite a lot of heat, but it also generates more evasion. We'll talk about evasion once it actually shows up. In fact, we can actually see how much evasion this will generate. That's the white chevron marker. We can see that we got one if we jump like this, and then we got four if we jump like this. Evasion does what you might imagine it does. We'll talk about countering evasion a little bit later, because again, these are just training targets, they will not fire back at us. Needless to say, evasion is good, obviously. And here's demonstration of the heat system. Now, because we jumped, we are now overheating. We can move into the water to cool down, which is a neat mechanic. So here we can see that we are overheating really badly, and we can see the indicator. Now, most actions generate some amount of heat. Even moving and running generate some heat. The only way to not generate any heat whatsoever is just stand still. Warning, plasma leak detected, jump jet malfunction. Jump jet systems damaged. System inoperable until repaired. Oh, for the love of all the gods. This is what I get for insisting on a rush job. Not that I had much of a choice. The Spinoza refit yards were backlogged like you wouldn't believe. It looked like they were trying to process every single lawyer guard make in time for the coronation. There isn't any time to get your jets replaced. So we're gonna have to make do without them. 
Go ahead and take that mech down with a melee attack. I wanna be sure nothing else is gonna break down on your blackjack before we take it on the Cormorant Road. Alright, so now we get the chance to use a melee attack. So when you have a valid target for a melee attack, there's going to be like a yellow rectangle around it, just like this. If we click on the target dummy, we'll get a chance to attack it with a melee. And as we can see here, melee attacks use the piloting skill to hit. So if you have high piloting skill, you can do quite a lot of damage with it. A melee attack does damage to one section. It can also do quite a lot of stability damage, which we'll talk about later, because again, this is a target dummy. But more importantly, it ignores evasive charges and it removes guarded stuns. So this can be really great to open with. And yes, deals damage and stability damage. Stability damage is a yellow bar on your mech, and basically the way that works, if you take too much stability damage, so past certain threshold, you will become unstable. And becoming unstable automatically removes all evasion charges, which can be great against an enemy and not so great against you, obviously. And then you can get knocked down, which is bad, as you'll see later, if or when it happens. Good hit, or at least that's solid. Alright, one last test. I want you to take your blackjack up to a sprint and evade my attack. Alright, so sprinting today, generates more evasion, you know but you will not be able to fire at the end of the sprint. So yeah, each evasive charge makes you harder to hit. Now we can sprint all the way, like so. And that will give us evasion. Here. We got three evasion charges. And when you fire at a target with evasion charges, it removes evasion even if you didn't hit. So a good way to counter evasion, other than by attacking in melee for example, or making the enemy unstable, is using really crappy weapons that you have on your weakest mechs for example. They won't really do anything, but they will shave off evasion charges. Congratulations Central, your blackjack's as combat ready as it can be, given the circumstances. For what it's worth, I hope that my suspicions turn out to be unfounded, and we end the day having a good laugh about what a paranoid old man I've become. But if not, then I know that you'll be ready. Alright, it's time to move out. Lady Arano is waiting for us at the mech bay. Alright then. Of course, this mech warrior was a student of Return to Mastiff, we can just sprint again. And off we go. There's still quite a lot to cover as far as game mechanics go. Like crits, for example, they work completely differently in Battletech than in, let's say, XCOM or most games, really. But we'll talk about that when it becomes relevant. Anyway, Victoria Espinosa. For the time being, my father has summoned me to the Picton docks. I have a fleet inspection and a tour of the family refit yards to preside over before the coronation. Behold the responsibilities of a noble daughter. A font of tedium that never runs dry. I know the feeling, cousin. By this time tomorrow, I'll be responsible for the entire reach. Give my best to your father and don't be late for the tourney. The gambling dens are already taking bets on how long it will take me to cripple that customized monstrosity you pilot. Bold words, cousin. But only victory they'll be celebrating is mine. You may be ascending the throne today, but my Kaga is more than a match for the family heirloom that you call a battle mech. And in the arena I reign supreme. We'll see, cousin, we'll see. At any rate, I will see you at the tourney grounds. Sir Raju, I'm ready to go when you are. Overland, along the Cormorant Road. It is the Arano tradition. Aye, Kamiya. We'll get you there in one piece. Central, fall in behind me. And remember what I told you. Alright then. So, mission successful. It wasn't really much of a mission. Not yet. I remember the Oregon Reach of old. The time of the Great Expansion. I was just a boy then. Proudly we went forth, bringing the light of our coalition to so many systems. And for what? To see our great kingdom slowly waste away? 
year after year the council deliberates while our economy falters, and the wolves bay at every door, while covetous neighbors plot against us. Well, I say it can go no further. We are here today because if Lady Arana will not act, someone must. I know what I'm asking of you. You will face former comrades, or even loved ones, on the battlefield. I take up arms against my own niece. But remember, today we sacrifice so that tomorrow we can return our kingdom to its proper glory, to its proper strength. So should you fall tonight, know that you did so as true heroes of the Reach. To your stations, for the Directorate! Coronation Day, Cordia City outskirts. Command interface initiated. So this mission right here is still basically the prologue, by the way. I'm going to miss this, Raju. The clarity of purpose that I feel in the cockpit of a battle mech. The simplicity of it. But there they are, just up ahead, the city gates and my future, all laid out before me. Wait, what's that smoke? A guard post. One of the small ones that dot the roads leading into the capital, but the emergency band's been quiet all morning. I haven't heard anything about any fire. Like Alright, so this is the free movement phase, or whatever you want to call it, where you can basically move all four mechs simultaneously, but as soon as you engage any enemy, this changes. As you might imagine. But right now we can move however we want. We can move them all simultaneously. We'll talk about more mechanics once we actually get into combat. Alright, so let's keep moving. We'll check out the outpost. Off we go. Some sort of explosion. Looks recent, though. Do you think this was an accident? No chance. You see those scorch marks on the rubble? That's laser fire. We need to get you out of here, Kamea, right now. Yes, I think you're right. There's a patrol of Royal Guards mechs up ahead. We should go up to them. Whatever's happening here, I won't let it derail your coronation. Alright, well, let's keep moving. Thank you. Now, we can go along the road, we'll or we can stay on the high ground in cover. We should That's be able to move down, down without the need for the jetpack. Alright, let's stay on the high ground for now and inside cover. All right. You have my attention. Let's keep moving. Yes, I we hear. should be in range pretty soon. Location confirmed. Now the green dot means this is cover, so we can see what exactly counts as cover, in case you have any doubts. Sometimes it's not entirely obvious until you check the color of the dot. All right. Stand so by. this should be enough. Let's see, can we stay in cover? We can sprint into cover? No, not quite. Alright, we can stay up here, though. Okay, let's stay up here with Central. And we'll move a little bit closer. I don't necessarily want to sprint. This will do. Alright, now I think we can move into cover. I've got your back. Yes, we can. Inside the objective area. Alright then. Here, that will do. Hail Mastiff. Hail Lady Arano. We were preparing for Lady Arano's coronation parade when we got a word of a disturbance along the Cormorant Road. A guard post behind us was attacked. Sir Raju found evidence of laser fire. 
Is the road behind you clear? Aye, all the way to the southern gate. Lead the way, Sir Raju. We'll fall in behind you and guard you. Tell me something, guardsman. If the road is clear, why is your battle mech damaged? Our mechs are overdue for maintenance. But that isn't important right now. We need to worry about Lady Arno's safety. Now, my lady, if you'll come with us. No, you're lying to us. It's my coronation day. No mechtech would have sent you out for a parade duty in that condition. I am your sovereign. Sir, you will tell me what happened here. Damn it, girl. We don't have time for this. Take them. Kill the old man and the mech warrior, but take Lady Arano alive. Alright, so you. combat phases. You didn't train me First, to let them you. move, shall we? So there's the melee attack and you can see that we lost one invasion. So the most important thing to talk about here is the initiative system. There are four or rather five levels of initiative and each mech is assigned to a certain initiative level based on its weight. So light mechs, then medium mechs, heavy mechs and assault mechs. Assault mechs are one, heavy mechs are two, medium are three and light mechs are four. There's also a pilot ability, which increases initiative by one. And mechs with higher initiative generally move first, but you can reserve your unit until the next phase. And this has a number of benefits, other than the obvious one. You might want to wait for the enemy mech to move first, see what it's going to do before you commit to attacking it. Because otherwise, if you hit the enemy mech, then it moves again, it will gain evasion again. So removing its evasion will be all for nothing. Not to mention it might move out of your line of sight and things like that. So that's the obvious benefit. There's also the second one, uh, which is defensive states. Defensive states generally persist until you move. So sometimes it is a good idea to preserve your unit to preserve its defensive state. If you anticipate it will get targeted. But you don't have to do it. You can, but you don't have to. So, we are in cover with Mastiff. Let's reserve and see what they are going to do. Let them make the first mistake. And when you reserve, you reserve all the units from that initiative category. Meaning, if you have three mechs which are assigned to initiative three, and you want to take action with some of them before reserving, you need to do that first. Because otherwise you will reserve all three of them. Just something to keep in mind. So now, if we don't want to reserve all three, and you can see that when we hover over reserve, the white chevrons get moved to initiative two. But we can move one of them first, and we can attack from the back, for example. We can also attack in melee. Yeah, we can attack this dude in melee, because as we can see, it has two evasion, and it also has cover. So we'll hit it in the face. Alright, let's do that then. This will ignore the evasive charges. There we go, and it also does a lot of damage to one section. In this case, we destroyed its left arm. And there's one more thing to mention. Well, actually, there are several. But if we hover over specific sections, we can see what weapons are in those sections. And you can actually destroy weapons. And this is where creeds come in. Because creeds in this game do not work like creeds in most games of this type. When you expose structure of that specific section, so let's say we burn through the armor on the right arm of this particular mech, then we'll have a chance to do crit damage. When you do crit damage, first you damage the weapon in that section, and when you crit it again, you destroy that weapon. So you could say that each weapon has two hit points in a sense. And when you crit it for the first time, you remove the first one. When you crit it for the second time, you destroy it. And even a damaged weapon has penalties. You can also destroy ammunition, because some weapons, like for example these, these are short range missiles. They actually require ammunition. And you can destroy ammunition. In fact, ammunition can explode when it's destroyed. If it had more than half left, it will explode and damage that particular section. So it can be a pretty good strategy, but you have to hover over that section to see what's where. 
We can also see some heat sinks installed in the legs. And as you might remember, I mentioned earlier, one of the ways to destroy a mech is to destroy both its legs. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, let's maybe do something. Standing by. So, we could maybe jump. Uh, no, we actually can't with the blackjack. Alright then, never mind. So, one more thing. You can see the red lines. These indicate line of sight, but there are several different types. So, for example, when it's a solid red line, we know that we have direct line of sight. When it's an arc, we will not be able to attack with most our weapons, but we will be able to attack with long-range missiles, because they can be fired in an arc. They take a slight penalty in that case, but you can hide behind an obstacle and then fire all your artillery. You can use a dedicated artillery piece, so load one make with missile weapons and then use it from out of line of sight. There are some advanced strategies, or even not so advanced that you can use with that. And there's also another indicator, I can't get it here. So if you have like an eye on the way, that means your line of sight is partially obstructed and you will take a penalty. And you can also have a white dotted line. That means you do have direct line of sight, but you can't fire for whatever reason. Maybe you are sprinting, or maybe you won't have enough actions to turn. If we move here, for example, we will not be able to turn back in that direction. So that's why there's a white dotted line instead of red. Alright, what are we going to do then? We also have some special abilities, but let's maybe not talk about everything all at the same time. Now, we can see that the range of the Kintaro will be very suboptimal if we move any closer. So it will be best to stay away. We can't get direct line of sight to this fella over here, the Panther. And I think we can get optimal range while staying in cover. Yes, this will be pretty much optimal range. Sounds good. So we can stay in cover and then we can take a shot with everything we have. The downside is that we removed evasion on the other mech, but not on the Panther. So this will be slightly suboptimal. It's generally best to focus fire. I could still use the long range missiles, but that's only one weapon out of many that we have. I'd rather take a shot at the Panther. We can see chance to hit, so we could disable this which will also generate a lot less heat. So in fact, let's disable the short-range missiles, some of them at least. Here, that will do. We'll take that shot. And we can see structure is exposed. And it lost evasion. Okay then, and when we target that mech again, we will be able to see how much damage exactly it took. Except right now I can't really target it, so I can't show you. Here, we can right click and we can see that structure is exposed on the right arm and on the left torso. There's also ammunition in the left torso. So this would be a good section to target. There are abilities that allow you to target specific section. There is one such ability, but I can't show you right now. You can also fire weapons that can let's say fish for crits. There are some weapons that are way better at this than others, once you expose the structure. In fact, there are weapons that have bonus chance to crit. You've got my so that's one way to do it. Alright, so what are we going to do with Mastiff? We could use the melee attack. We could also use multi-target if we want to. That's one way to do it. I don't think I'm going to use multi-target though. There's also sensor lock. Sensor lock allows you to remove two evasive charges. So it can be good to open the turn with. If you know that target will not move anymore. Alright, let's check the status of these guys. So we can see that the right arm is completely destroyed now. And the left torso has exposed structure. We could attack from the back which is always a good idea. Uh, well, actually, we kind of can't. I'd like to have optimal range here, but I don't think that's going to happen. 
not quite. Yeah, the Centurion is not very maneuverable. Let's just say. The range still isn't terrible. Or we can just go for the melee attack. I might do that. Let's attack the Panther though. We have a better chance to take it down. Or maybe not take it down, but destroy either the left torso or the right arm. And if we destroy the left torso, the ammunition will explode. Roger that. To hell with the weapon. Here. Alright then. Left leg destroyed. And when you destroy a leg, the mech gets automatically knocked down. That's something to keep in mind. And when the mech is knocked down, you can use cold shots. Which means you can target specific part of it. Unfortunately, it already got up, so I won't be able to demonstrate that. That's one of two ways to use cold shots. First one when the mech is knocked down, also when it's shut down, because it took too much hit damage, and the third one with a special yeah, ability. Attention. Anyway, wait, let's see if we can just take it down for good. Let's fire everything we got. There's a pretty good chance we will do either very good damage, or maybe we'll just destroy it outright. Especially since we are targeting the rear. And yep, we destroyed it. Scratch one hostile. Pilot is incapacitated. Alright, we got one more left. The Shadow Hawk. And as you can see, the arm is destroyed. So if it had any weapons in that arm, it can't use them anymore. Alright, let's move. Oh, here we can see the red eye. Meaning... The line of sight is obstructed and we'll take a penalty to hit. But we still have line of fire, so we can take that shot, it's just that we'll take a penalty. Here we can see that the laser is destroyed because it was in the arm. Alright, fire. And yep, ammunition exploded and destroyed the sections, now pilot is injured. This should be enough. We can just punch it. Oh, no, we actually can't. Not enough movement. Alright then. Let's back up slightly and use optimal firing range. We don't really need to stay in cover. I'm quite confident this will be enough to take it down. So, we'll fire with everything we have. Hit sink destroyed. That was actually not enough to take it down. Alright. Still, there's not much else it can do. It can try to fire, but we have full armor. Tell me what you need. Okay, this is definitely going to be enough now. Just checking range. Okay, this will do. This will be optimal range. Alright, yep. That will do. We can fire with everything we have, that's fine. Still not quite enough, but yep, we destroyed the weapon. We destroyed the left torso. It won't last much longer. Kamea can probably finish the job. We can even get line of sight. It won't be perfect, range will be suboptimal. But it should be enough. It's just that we'll take a penalty to hit. We can disable the long range missile. Everything else has at least 90%. Now, we don't want to use everything because then we will overheat. We will disable some of the short range missiles. Affirmative. And it's down. Now we can move on. Kamea! Kamea, can you hear me? Alexander, we were just attacked. The Royal Guard, my own guardsmen, tried to take me prisoner. It's happening here too. The Royal Guard are killing one another in the halls. Lord Carossa's house guard just got gunned down in front of me. The Turney Pavilion is a slaughterhouse. 
I won't let these seditionists, or whoever they are, steal my birthright. We need to rally every loyalist we can find and make a push on the capital. I'll take the throne by force if I must. Go to Rotorwa Township, to the armory. Your soldiers are using it as a rallying point. I heard Lord Decimis send his houseguard there a few minutes ago. Someone's here. I have to move. Rally what forces you can and meet me at the turning grounds. Be safe. You heard him, Mastiff. Rotorwa Township. We'll go there, rally our fighters and march on the southern gate with an army at our back. Kamea. I know that you and Lord Madeira are friends, but we can't take what he told you on faith. Right now, we don't know who we can trust. In this case we do. Alexander has been my closest friend and confidant for as long as I can remember. His loyalty is beyond question. I trust him with my life and yours. Now take me to the armory. As you command, my lady. Alright then, so let's move on. This is not quite done yet. In fact, there's still a lot to do in this mission. Let's go. And enemy contact. Alright then, we did move into cover. Now, not all enemies are mechs, there are also vehicles, which are generally speaking very squishy, but they can have pretty powerful weapons. So it's definitely not a good idea to just ignore them, because they can mess you up. Just saying. There it is. It's too far away to target, so we'll just use Brace, that's fine. And there they are. Looks like that's just vehicles. Reading loud and clear. This is probably still too far away. Yep, this is definitely too far away. We might as well brace because we won't be doing anything else. Yes, it doesn't stack with cover, but it is better than cover. Generally speaking. Not always. The special case is taking damage from the rear. Okay, brace. So there's our objective, Rotorwa Township. And we got four vehicles to deal with. That should be pretty easy, but again, they can have pretty nasty weapons sometimes. You've got my attention. Not in the first mission, but it's just something to keep in mind. Alright, we can use optimal range like this. So let's do exactly that. We'll stay in cover inside the forest. Our armor is still mostly fine, but our right leg took quite a lot of armor damage, as you can see. We are down to 5 out of 80 armor on the right leg. And when your leg gets destroyed, you get knocked down automatically. And you get destroyed if both your legs get destroyed. Alright, we will fire with everything we have here. We don't have a whole lot of AC-10 ammunition, but we kind of need it in this case. Let's see. Alright, fire. Here we go. Damn, there, it's down. We probably could have used the multi-target, but I didn't want to risk not being able to destroy any of them. Now they will get a move. Yep, structure exposed now. Alright, let's take another shot. Uh, let's check our guy. Oh, center torso is exposed. Alright. That is not great. This will do. Let's go, Kamea. Okay, so we do have multi target. Wait, can we actually take a shot? Oh, right, we cannot. That's an arc. We will have to use the long-range missiles. Alright, well, let's use long-range missiles. This should be good enough? No. It will not be. Central! He is actually too far away, unfortunately. How about we sprint into cover? Yep, that's good enough. Let's sprint into cover.
that will give him free evasion charges. They will almost certainly target Raju, because he only has one evasion and he took the most damage. Okay, yep. Now, once we take too much damage on the left arm and our left leg, we can turn our other side towards them, so to speak. But it's one thing we can do. Yep, he is taking a beating. And as we can see, he is actually about to become unstable, which is not good. We might want to move him out of the way. So we could sprint out of the way and just hide. We could also destroy them. We can probably destroy them before they get a chance to do anything again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can. But we can see all the damage he took. It's pretty brutal. The center torso is exposed. And we got two medium lasers in there. And once the center torso gets destroyed, your mech gets destroyed. Like I said earlier. Giving him everything I've got. Here. Okay, one down. And we should be able to destroy the other one. Stood a chance. It will still attack. It will almost certainly still target Raju. Or maybe not, actually. Tell me what you need. Okay, well, let's do this. You have my attention. We can attack in melee if we want to, which should be enough. Alright, let's do that then. The nice thing about melee attacks is not only that they do a lot of damage, especially in case of vehicles they take extra damage, but also they don't generate any heat. Okay, and central. We got one more target to get rid of. This should be enough. Just fire with everything we have. It's probably overkill. But let's do it anyway. I don't want to risk not taking it down. Bye bye. Alright. So let's keep moving. We are still not quite done. We'll have to be careful with Raju because he took quite a beating there. Kamea! Kamea, do you read me? It's Espinoza, your uncle. Do you hear me? House Espinoza is usurping the throne. It can't be. My uncle. Victoria. Kamea, I just watched an Espinoza bottleneck plow through an alley full of civilians. This is happening, and is happening now. Your loyalists have fallen back to the market district. That's where they're making their stand. What's left of the Royal Guard are doing their best, but there's something wrong with their bottlenecks. Wait, what's that sound? Oh gods. Well, yeah, that just happened. It's over, Kamel. Your ascendancy, the Arano legacy, all of it. Victoria, what have you done? You know, Kamel, for years, I loved you like a sister. But then my father helped me see it. Your family's complacency. What is done to the rich? Our nation dwindles like a dying star, and House Arano is to blame. My father offered you a path to glory. You have fought under your banner proudly, served as your strong right hand. It was a knife in my heart when you turned him away. Damn it, Victoria. I taught you better than this. You taught me lies. Kamea, for the love that I once bore you, I'm going to give you a chance to surrender. I'll even spare the old man and his mech warrior if you stand down now. I don't want you to see you hurt. But you cannot be allowed to roll. I'll see you hanged for this, Victoria. You and your father both. Do you hear me? You are traitors to the rich, and I will fight you to the last. Then you truly are a fool. I'll spare you in spite of yourself. But you've cost your royal escort their lives. Enemy contact! Attention, all Espinosa This is where the fun begins. This is Lady Victoria Espinosa. So, destroy the enemy forces. All friendly units must survive. Alright then, so again, Mastiv is not in a great shape. He does have cover right now. Okay, we can take some shots. We can generate 
two evasion charges, but we can't move into cover while getting two charges. Alright. Let's take a shot from here. This is light mech. It's a scout mech, basically. So we can take a shot at that. And we should hit its side. Alright. In that case... Fire. Copy that. Nice one. Alright, that's exactly what I was looking for. We one-shot it. That's one less hostile on the field. One out of three. And here they come. These two are slightly heavier. I bet they will target Raju. Yep, they certainly will. Okay. So that's four evasion. Quite a lot, actually. Let's see. You have my attention. We can hit it in melee. Which might not be a bad idea. We will not be in cover if we do that. But still, this is our best chance. I'm Let's up. do it. Yes, nice camera oh. angle. I can totally see what's going on. There we go. Right leg destroyed and we knocked it down. That was pretty much the best case scenario. Destroying the leg and knocking it down. And now we'll be able to take a cold shot because it can't move anymore. It already moved on its turn. And we still got the blackjack or the central. Armor breach. Internal yes, yes, I know. Armor breach. How is he doing now? Let's have a look here. Yeah, not great. 34 out of 80. Not good. Anyway, let's check our range. We can just stay where we are, actually. So now when we target a knockdown mech, we can choose the exact section we want to target. We could target the head if we want to. To just kill the pilot straight up. Let's target the head and we'll fire everything we got. Alright, let's do it then, shall we? There we go. It's down. Now we got one more mech to deal with. Attention. Yeah, that's Espinosa. Okay, Mastiff. Let's keep him safe, shall we? I'm a little bit worried about this. I'm actually going to sprint into cover. And out of line of sight of that other guy. This way he will get cover and nice evasion. Here, free evasion charges. And the other mech is out of range to use a melee attack, in case it gets any ideas to do that. Alright, so now we can either attack in melee or we can attack it from the rear. Range will be very suboptimal if we attack from the rear, so let's attack with melee. There, structure exposed. And now it's unsteady. So like I said earlier, unsteady automatically removes all evasion charges and you cannot gain any evasion charges. Until you get rid of the unsteady status. Now we could attack it in melee again. If we want to, or we can fire all our weapons. I think in this case it will be better to fire all our weapons. At least that's what I'm thinking. Alright, let's back up slightly, because then we will have optimal range. And we'll fire everything we have. Hit looks mostly fine. All weapons committed. Yep, there we go. Come here, do you read me? Alexander, thank the gods. I thought I'd lost you when the bombs fell. You very nearly did. Come here, the city is lost. We have to get off this planet, and we need to do it now. I can't abandon Karamadir. This is my home, my birthright. The battle's over, Kamea. Lord Madeira has the right of it. It's time for you to run, escape from this madness, and live to restore the coalition another day. You're... you're both right. 
My uncle has won. The reach is his. We'll mourn for it later. The both of us. For now, you need to move. I have a dropship waiting at Shepard's Pass. I'm on my way there right now. Hurry, admit me there, please. We're we're on our way. So here's the dropship. And we have a new objective, destroy the Espinosa vehicles. All friendly units must survive. You've got my attention. We just need to be careful with Mastiff. Everything else will be fine. Alright, well, let's move. We'll move into cover, for Roger. obvious reasons. Or rather, sprint into cover. That will do. And yep, here they are. Shouldn't be too hard. So, let's see. We can take a shot. And generate two evasion charges. No, we won't be able to take a shot from here, and... There is cover. Okay, this counts as cover. Alright, this looks good. Let's do that. Here, we can take a shot. We will generate a lot of heat if we fire with everything, but chances are we will destroy it. We could probably destroy it without using everything, but I want to make sure it goes down. Here, it's down. It was probably overkill, but you know what? That's fine. Mostly because we are almost done with this mission. Alright, central. Let's sprint, shall we? We can't use jetpacks because they were damaged earlier. Alright, we got one more. And there it is. Will it be able to even take a shot right now? Nope. Talk to me. Okay, and Mastiff. You know what? Let's reserve. You've got my attention. Now we can take a shot from the side. This will be slightly suboptimal range, but it's better than nothing. Uh, actually. No, this is still suboptimal range. Orders. All right. I mean, it's better than nothing. So fine. Let's just do it then. I'll make it happen. Just need to not overheat. So don't use everything. That's not a good idea at all. Here, that will do. We will almost reach the safe threshold. There's also a weapon, a flamer, which can make your enemy overheat. And that can be a good strategy. If the enemy unit overcommits with heat. Alright, and let's move. We can sprint now. Off we go then. We are almost done. And all of this was basically the prologue mission. The game didn't really start properly just yet. <laughs> I don't think we are quite done yet from what I remember. Yeah, we are definitely not done yet. There will be one more fight actually. Okay, let's stay in cover. Like this. Especially with Mastiff. I wouldn't want to fail now. And brace. Yes, I hear you. So, yep, into cover we go, like this. This is your last chance, cousin. Don't make me order your death. Though whatever you must betray her. A headstrong fall to the end. Damn you for this. Captain Haust, destroy them. Mastiff, my cousin, all of them. Leave no survivors. As you command, my lady. Yep, one last fight. Wolverine. Now that thing is pretty tough. Let's just say. So, central. Let's see. Well, there's not much else he can do. Just brace, I guess. Here it comes. 
Fortunately, it's just one. Well, he will have more, but just one really heavy dude. I'm listening. Okay, let's stay in optimal range. There are turrets in the back, but we can stay out of their range. Still, if we want a more optimal range, we need to move closer. We could reserve. There's kind of not much point doing that, actually. I'll have to take a shot from slightly suboptimal range here. We can still move slightly closer. Also, we are overheating really badly. So, you know what? Let's actually brace. That will remove a lot of the heat. Which is what we want. You've got my attention. Now, there's not much point using sensor lock right now, because that only lasts until the end of this turn. And we are not using Kamea on this turn. So... We could attack... Oh yeah, we could destroy the laser turret. That is not a bad idea. But in case of Mastiff, I think I'd rather brace right now. Maybe even move a bit. We can get one evasion charge at least. I would still like to face in the right direction. This one won't give us any evasion charges, but we will be facing with our front armor. Now guarded and entrenched. We are in cover, so we should be okay. Alright, we need to do some good damage on this turn. Reading loud and clear. So let's see. Tell me what you need. Well, on the next turn, I guess. What about these stupid turrets? You have my attention. We could also try attacking him from the side. But we will be in range of the turrets if we do that. Copy that. Let's try. They shouldn't do too much damage to Kamea. She has pretty much all of her armor. We could use multi-target. But I'm leaning towards just focusing on the Wolverine. That thing is nasty. Oh yeah, overheating. Okay, fine. Alright, fire. Yep, yeah, that was pretty good. Left arm destroyed. Hopefully it had some weapons on that arm. We can check. Left arm. It did not have any weapons on that. That's fine. So, now central. Let's see. I can't attack from the same direction. We can attack from the left if we want to. So, something like this. This right here counts as cover. That's one of these cases where it's not quite obvious. But we need to make sure we have line of sight. Yeah, it's obstructed from here. This location will be fine. Yeah, let's focus on the Wolverine. I'm not too worried about their turrets. These are light laser turrets with medium lasers. Medium lasers are not that strong. We'll fire with everything we have. Hopefully we'll hit his leg. Left leg. That would be nice. We might. We did not. Actually, we did slightly. Now it's unsteady, good. So it cannot get any evasion charges once it's unsteady. It will have to reduce stability damage. Alright, now Mastiff. Let's see if we can do some nice damage now. We can move slightly closer for more optimal range. So let's maybe do that. We will not have totally optimal range, but it will be a little bit better at least. Alright bro, I'm counting on you. We'll take a shot with everything. Alright, go. It doesn't have a lot of armor left, so it doesn't even matter which part we are going to hit. We just need to do good enough damage. There, very nice. That was a nice shot. And as you can see, the ammunition exploded and injured the pilot. Now, if we do some more damage to the pilot, we will just straight up kill the Wolverine. It's backing up. I can't blame it. I would do exactly the same. 
So we can either finish it off or we can try to focus on the turrets if we want to. Let's see. Well, if we want to stay in cover with Blackjack, we should take a shot at one of the turrets. How about we do that? Alright, we'll take a shot with everything. Yeah, that's fine. And that was enough. That was barely enough, actually. So, Kamea is next. Can we kill that dude? Yes, we actually probably can. This would be more optimal range, but we wouldn't have cover. Yeah, I think I'd rather move into cover. And have a slight penalty. I'll do what you ask. Not that it matters too much anymore. Kamea can't take nearly enough damage to threaten her, but it's a good practice. Now, let's watch the hit level. I'm locked on the enemy's six. You're going down, buddy. Jump jets destroyed. Minus one evasion. If you had any sense, you'd You're going down soon. Nice try. How's that working out for you? All right, Mastiff. He's actually close enough. There. Again, it will be slightly suboptimal range, but that doesn't matter. It should be enough damage to take down the Wolverine. Pretty sure it will be. Should have watched your positioning better. Especially with long-range missiles. Yep, it's down. Battle neck down. All that's left is one turret. Yes, that part is easy. Now we can turn without moving. Which can be a good idea because, generally speaking, you only lose defensive stance and bonuses if you move. But you can just turn, it will not count as moving. Confirmed. Just need to watch overheating. That was enough to destroy it. Alright, and now we just need to get into the evac zone. We are basically done here. Let's go. Well, there's just the story bit left. Uh, can we go up here? And uh, no, we need to go right. All right then. I'm listening. Let's go. Confirmed. So again, this entire mission was basically the prologue. The game didn't even properly start just yet. There, that's that. We're here. Thank the gods you made it. Kamea, Captain Halvorsen is preparing the engines now. In another five minutes, we'll be ready to depart. Five minutes is a long time. Central, you see Lady Arano to the docking ramp. When she's aboard, come back to me. We'll hold this pass against whatever comes. Thank you, Sir Rashu. All right, then. Thank you both. I won't so get Kamea to the dropship. Off you go. All units, advance. I want you to take down that dropship. Destroy everyone and everything that stands in your way. Alright, Central. I trained you for this. We'll fight side by side, watch each other's backs. Above all else, we will keep a Lady Arano safe. Protect the dropship. It's all that matters. Warning. Engine hit critical. Warning. Error shutdown initiated. Reactor offline. Weapons offline. Trouble with your blackjack, Central? Shame. That's been happening a lot to a Royal Guard battle mechs lately. You have the numbers on us, and you've resorted to sabotage, and you're gloating about it? You've got no honor, you vicious little brat. Not you, nor your backstabbing father. Shut your mouth, old man. My father is a great man, and I swear to all the gods, you will suffer if you insult him again. Your father is a coward, and so are you. Central, I want you to eject now. Punch out. You're no good to anybody in a broken mech, and I won't see you die today. Eject mech warrior now, that's an order. Now, come for me, Victoria. Your teacher is waiting. Come and show me what you've learned. 
Mission successful. Well, sort of. So, that's that. 8 hours later. High orbit. Koromo there. Easy there, John. You took a nasty crack on the head when you punched out. Don't worry, you're safe now. My name is Darius Oliveira. I'm the XO of Markham's Marauders. We're a mercenary outfit with ties to House Arano. We did some work for Highlord Tomati way back when. I'd introduce you to Commander Markham, but he was on a supply run in the market district when the bombs fell. He, uh, well, he didn't make it. You rescued me, why? Seemed appropriate given the circumstances. After seeing what happened to Markham, I didn't feel right leaving you in the hands of this new directorate. When we picked up your broadcast on the emergency band, we knew what we had to do. What about Mastiff, Sir Raju Montgomery? Did you find him? We found his mech, it was completely cored out. Nobody survives a hit like that. For what is worth, I'm sorry. We supported the Royal Guard on a handful of deployments, and Sir Raju earned my respect many times over. His death is a loss for us all. Were you able to recover my blackjack? Yeah, our mech tech hauled what's left of it into the mech bay. It isn't pretty, but if you give him enough time, Young can fix just about anything. Try not to take the loss too hard. Young said that your mech shows signs of deliberate sabotage. Whoever you had working on it really did a number on the reactor. Punching out was the right move. Okay, so what happens now? Well, things aren't looking so hot around here. What with the coup and all. House Espinosa's directorate is the new de facto government of the Oregon Reach. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but Lady Arano is dead. Her dropship was destroyed on takeoff. It's all over the news. Well, shit. Our sentiments exactly. We're getting the hell out of Oregon territory. I've booked transport on the first jump ship out. We're heading to a nice quiet stretch of independent space. All the way across the frontier. On the Canopian border. Not a cheap trip, but we'll worry about how we're gonna pay for it later. Now, according to the info on your blood sheet, you've got family in the deep periphery. I'm afraid that's going to make getting you back there difficult. There aren't many freighter captains who are willing to travel that far from the inner sphere. So the way I see it, you've got a couple of options. You could stay with us for the long haul if you wanted, that's option A. When we get where we're going, we can drop you at the nearest planet, maybe you can make a place for yourself there. Of course, I'll need you to pinch in your share of the fuel, plus food, lodging and repairs on your mech. Fair is fair after all. Alternatively, you could find a place for yourself in the Marauders if you wanted to. Wouldn't take you long to work off your debt. And you run with Mastiff, so I know you've got chops. Think it over. Sleep on it. You've had hell of a day. And we've got a long road ahead. Three years later. Command interface initiated. Alright, so this is almost the proper start of the game, but not quite. The Independent Prospectors League thanks you for your assistance, Commander. We're miners, not soldiers. We can't fight these bastards off on our own. That's what you're paying us for, don't worry. We'll get your platforms back. 
This isn't about reclaiming what's ours. Much as the metals killed hundreds of us when they tried to jump our claim. We want you to make them bleed for what they've done here. Alright. So this is our target, the two mining platforms. Platform Bravo is the site for the corporate security tower, engage and destroy it. Anyway, there's one more mission to do before we get to the important part of the campaign, but we're going to continue this in the next episode. So thanks for watching the first one, I hope you enjoyed it, leave a like if you did, and let me know in the comments what you think about Battletech so far. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.